Kia ora whanau. welcome to Franklin Baptist Church Online, Church at Home, Church at Level 3. So good that you can join with us today. I'm wondering what time you're watching the service with us. Is it 10 o'clock? Did you put your clocks forward for daylight saving? I always have a little bit of a giggle to myself as a pastor when it comes to daylight savings. You see, Inevitably, with a large congregation, there's always one or two people who forget to put their clock forward, so they turn up at nine o'clock in the morning and look a little bit confused. And then there's the ones that, that do put their clock forward, they're, they're there at 10 o'clock. And then there's the ones who get it wrong and they put their clocks back and they arrive at 11 o'clock and miss half of the service. Happens every single year. I have a little giggle to myself just because I've been one of those people too. So there are some benefits of being online together. No one's got to see you if you're late this time. But for those who are joining us online at the, at the 10 o'clock time, feel free to add some chats and the comments in the chats there. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for joining with us today. Today, we are looking at lessons in lockdown. We're hearing from a number of different people sharing with us some lessons that they have learned in lockdown. One quick lesson I've learned is the value of worship. I picked up my guitar here in this room earlier this week and just realized the life-giving um, importance of, of worshiping my God. So we're going to join in song together right now. Awesome. Worthy, worthy, worthy. 
sing for all that you've done for me. So yes, God, we want to say thank you for your amazing grace poured out through us into our lives through the work of Jesus and his life and death and resurrection. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence that is here with us today in our rooms as we participate in this online service together. Lord, I pray that your grace would touch each person today. In Jesus' name. Amen. I mean, hey, I'm wondering what you're learning during this season of lockdown. Today, the focus of our service is on lessons in lockdown. I've learned some things. I've learned that uh, putting espresso coffee and cold fizzy water so from the soda stream is not a great combination. <laughs> uh, I've, I've learned that uh, using a golf driver to help spread cow manure in my paddock is um, not always the best idea. It, it is an effective way of, of spreading it and it does fill that little gap for those of us who have been missing the golf course during level four, uh, but it also adds other challenges. Maybe I'll demonstrate that another time. I'm, I'm wondering what you are learning in lockdown. There's some interesting lessons about ourselves, some funny things and also some deep spiritual lessons. So I'm looking forward to hearing from um, Sandra, from Josh, from Penny as they share some lessons that they have been learning during lockdown during this season. At this time we're also going to hear from uh, Julia and, and uh, Kid Slot and also we're going to have a, a listen to some of the, a bit of an update from our global partners um, Kevin and Gillian Bird. So I'm looking forward to that. Kia ora everyone and welcome to Kids Lot today. I'm going to read you a story uh, that sums up something I've learned that's been really important to me this lockdown and it's actually from Philippians 4, 8-9 and it is called Whatever is Lovely and it's by Susie Paul. Okay, there are things that make me feel afraid and things that make me feel sad. And sometimes life seems so unfair. But I won't worry about these things. I'll talk to God and he'll help me. And then I will think about whatever is lovely. I'll think about things that are amazing. Things very great. Things very small. I'll think about someone who is kind and how I can be kind too. Because this does me good. It's a great way to live. That was pretty cool, eh? Well, that's it for me this week and I will see you next week. Bye. Greetings from Cambodia. Um, we are Kevin and Gillian Bird and we live and work in the Kingdom of Wonder. We are Wycliffe Bible Translators members working in the area of scripture engagement. We've been training or sponsoring training of Creative Bible Lessons, CBL. Uh, and this particular training is in the Preponlea village and many other villages around have, have joined in as well so that they can learn how to teach Sunday school. The training is very much learning and doing and practicing so that they know what they're doing when they go back to their churches and their own Sunday schools. The, the non-government organisation I work for has two offices, one in Badenbong and one in Phnom Penh, and I enjoy working with the staff when they come to visit from Phnom Penh. I also teach the interns 
um, how to cook um, meals because they often when they've left the orphanages they don't have basic skills and here we are learning how to make fresh spring rolls. They also often have never had a birthday cake so I always make a point of making a birthday cake and Pala, the one in blue, wanted a white birthday cake for her birthday. Part of my job is to help them do their job better and here I am observing them taking a workshop themselves to see how, they, how I might help them to improve. Some of the field trips involve going out to visit the families. Here I am with a donor representative who wanted to see where their funds were being um, distributed and we are standing on the side of the road um, and that's of one of the village elders who is there to see what's happening. Well, I hope you've um, learned some things about Cambodia and how, what life is like here for us. We um, would like you to pray for us, um, for myself. Um, please pray for the work that I do with the staff. They will know that they are loved and that they, um, they too can come to know Jesus in the best way that I can help them to do that. Yeah, we, we like I like the idea of not only doing stuff, stuff for people, but also doing stuff with people. Um, so uh, we'd like you to pray concerning COVID. At the moment, there's been a bit of an outbreak, and, and groups are only able to meet in groups of ten, and very people are very frightened. They're, they're frightened to have the jab, and they're frightened to uh, die from not having the jab. So um, yeah, it's it's not a good sort of uh, environment. And, uh, and, so, and we also ask, ask that you pray for wisdom for us in terms of how we relate to others and that we respect people's uh, concerns, uh, but also give uh, provide encouragement uh, to, to our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as well. Appreciate the views for the context and also um, our partnerships that we can continue to, to build on those, um, uh, even though the circumstances are a little bit tricky that we can still build on those and uh, strengthen those partnerships and uh, encourage uh, each other together uh, in the Lord. And so th thanks again for watching our video, we uh, appreciate it. I am always encouraged to hear these little updates about what God's people are doing around the world, part of our own church family in other settings. It's great to hear these stories. Last week we, we shared about the Good Samaritan and I've personally been challenged about the way that we reach out and serve in our community. And I wanted to share and celebrate a story about Leslie Allian and Dan Oliver and the, the opportunities that God has opened up for them to be able to channel God's blessing into neighborhoods where there is need. Let's hear from Lissy Ali and Dan right now. Hi everyone, my name is Lissy Ali. And I'm Dan. And we're here to talk to you about what's been happening with us during this lockdown and what God has been doing uh, in our work and in our lives during this lockdown. So we run a health and wellbeing mentoring program called La Langa and we actually launched and created this program last year in response to COVID. So last year the Ministry of Education asked for innovative ideas from the community to meet the well-being challenges of Māori and Pacific learners in the Desa One community who had been impacted by COVID. And so the focus of our program really is to champion the success of Māori and Pacific learners. We're based in the Desa One schools and what sets us apart really is our use of technology to host our program um, and to measure the well-being of students who are enrolled in our mentoring program. Heading into this most recent lockdown that we've all been through in Auckland, we continued to reach out to our students. We wanted to continue to engage with them, to provide mentoring for their well-being, to help them through this challenging time, to help them with their online schooling. As we did that, we found that a lot of the children in these DSL1 schools are facing similar problems. Overcrowded houses, a lot of them have had an influx of, of family members into their houses, which means that they don't have quite spaces to be able to do their online schooling or to engage with, with programs like ours. Some of them don't have devices either. Some of them don't have a tablet or a laptop or, or something basic that they can use to engage with their online school, to engage with, with the Lalanga program. 
that was problematic. But the biggest problem we found was that students started reporting to us that they just didn't have food in the household. Household budgets have been stretched lately because a lot of the adults in the household, they're on reduced wages, they're down to the wage subsidy or less if they can't work. Um, and a lot of these, these children, they're also de dependent on um, having the free lunches that the schools provide through the government program. Because school's not uh, happening at the moment, they don't get that lunch. And so what's happened over a period of time is that kids are trying to engage with online schooling and other programs like ours, but there's just no food, they're very hungry. And, and that was the problem that we decided we wanted to try and tackle. So to tackle this problem, we decided to raise $20,000 to provide 100 food boxes for the students from Tamaki College. So Tamaki College is in the Desawan community. Um, and so we prayed about it and really asked God to show us a way because obviously we were in a lockdown and we had no idea who was going to support our campaign, who should we ask to support it. And so the miracle with this story is that within th two or three days we had raised $60,000 towards our campaign and it's been about five weeks since we launched our campaign and we've raised just over $115,000. And so it's just been amazing. Um, we've had amazing donors, generous donors who have donated um, financially towards our campaign. We've also had donations through food. The Pukakoa community has been so good to us. Actually, when we look back, our food boxes has, have really been filled by the Pukakoa community. Farmers from this area have really ge donated generously towards us. The Wilcox family, we're really grateful for them once they heard about what we're doing. Um, Marianne got in touch with me and so every week John and Marianne have been dropping produce for us um, to put in our food boxes. We've also had Kurt McCann give to us generously um, more produce for our food boxes and so we have just been really blown away by the generosity of the New Zealand community and also the Franklin community and we've just been amazed by just God's hand on this this whole project. I mean we've had many challenges. We had no idea how to run a food food bank or box campaign uh, sourcing food has been a huge challenge during this time and I remember actually the first time we had to put boxes together almost in tears because I realized how hard it was going to be to source food and I just had to ask God well you we're in this situation this is no surprise to you help us to make it happen and so every single problem and challenge that we faced um, especially around COVID, managing the risk around COVID too, has been a challenge. God has always protected us, has always provided, and has always led us in, in the right direction. So we're really grateful for that. So initially, our goal was to produce 100 food boxes to one Desa one community. To date, we've produced over seven, just over 750 food boxes. We've reached uh, three, uh, four different schools, Tamaki College, um, Tangaro College, three different schools, Tamaki College, Tangaro College in Otara, and also a small Otara preschool called Rakoteo Kato Kakala. It really has been an honour and it's been very humbling to really sense God using us as his hands at this time to meet the needs of these students in these communities. And we're really grateful for everybody who's been of assistance, everybody who has helped deliver boxes, everyone who has donated produce and food. It's, it's truly been a miracle. And like I said, absolutely an honor to be part of this, this program to help people during lockdown. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are still, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ. 
Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless pain, the gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God. really grateful for our worship team. I can't wait to be back singing and worshipping together in the same room at the same time. It's one of the things that I'm looking forward to at some stage. And I'm also really grateful for the technology to have been able to pre-record the worship and, and even this little slot that I'm doing right now. And one of the lessons in lockdown for me has been the way that the Holy Spirit is able to use these settings, these uh, settings on Facebook, these different settings in social media where God's word has been procla proclaimed and even spread even more widely because of the circumstances that we are in. God's word is not constrained. God's presence is not constrained. And even though we are unable to gather right now in the same way, God's presence is not limited. It's one of the amazing blessings of lockdown. I wonder what you are learning during this season of lockdown. I, I wonder what you're learning about yourself. I wonder what you're learning about God. We're about to hear from some testimonies of, of people in our church and the things that they are learning in lockdown. We're going to hear from Josh and from Sandra. We're going to take some time to pause and enjoy God's presence as we drink and breathe in God's presence here in your room this morning. And we're also going to be hearing from Penny as well and some things that she has been learning during this season of lockdown. So thank you for these testimonies. Let's listen with open hearts to what God might want to teach us today. Morena etifano. This morning you're going to hear from Penny, from Sandra and from myself some of the lessons that we have learnt throughout this lockdown. I'd like to tell you a story of, of my family, uh, of Felix and Wendy and myself, and, and how we like to play games uh, during this lockdown. One of our games we like to play is hide and go seek. Um, our house isn't very big, but we like to, uh, to try and, and hide in the best places that we can find. Uh, 
Wendy would take Felix and go and hide under the covers of the bed and I would go and look for him. Or I'd take Felix and we would hide behind a curtain or behind a door and Wendy would come and look for us. Uh, sometimes I'd go and hide by myself or Wendy would hide by herself and, and the other person and Felix would go and look for them throughout the entire house. It was a lot of fun. What we learned was Felix wasn't very good at hiding. He would, if we were hiding with him, he would giggle under the, if he was under the bed covers, he would giggle with us and laugh and move. Um, and we would always know exactly where he was. If we asked Felix to hide on his own, he would lie down in the middle of the floor and uh, curl up into a ball. Or he would go and stand behind a curtain and go <laughs> and giggle. We always knew where Felix was. He was not good at hiding. And throughout this game I pondered uh, on, on, on God and, and what does God think of, of hiding, go seek and hiding. And I thought, actually God never hides from us. He is always in the place we expect him to be. Just like Felix was always be lying in the middle of the floor or hiding behind a curtain, we know exactly where God will be. We don't have to look that far, but simply open our eyes. And when we have our blinders on, he speaks out to us. He makes noises so we know exactly where he is. God wants us to find him. So don't be afraid to count to 10 and then open your eyes and find God. Uh, during the game, when Felix tries to find us, it's, uh, <laughs> he's, he's pretty good. He walks around the house uh, looking in every place that he could find, looking in every room. In one game, I found a really, really good hiding place. I opened up our wardrobe and I hid behind all of our clothes and pulled a blanket over my legs. So even if they opened the door, they couldn't see me. They searched, Wendy and Felix searched room by room, calling my name, looking high and looking low, looking in all the places where we'd hit him before. I heard Wendy say with a slight frustration in her voice, Felix, I really don't know where daddy is. Let's keep looking. I made some noise. Uh, I banged on the wall and finally they found me. I maybe should have saved that spot for when it was time to do the dishes or change Felix's nappy too late now I guess. But anyway, what I learnt from this is that just like Felix and Wendy, God never stops searching for us. We may be hiding but God doesn't stop searching. He is calling our name. He is hunting to find us and embrace us. Lastly, through this hide and seek game I pondered on what I could get done while Wendy and Felix were hiding. I would count to 10 and I thought, hmm, could I eat a cookie in this time? Maybe if I counted slow enough, I could get the dishes done. Or I could stop and play a game on my phone. I wondered how long Felix and Wendy would actually hide for before they got bored and came out to find me. I didn't do this, of course, because it would spoil the game, but I certainly did think about it. What hit me, though, was when I found Felix, I saw the joy in his face. His excitement to see me and to embrace me and give me a cuddle. This is the same for God. He delights when we find him, when we spend time with him. So, this lockdown time, have we been hiding from God? Not wanting to be found? Have we stopped looking for what he is doing or where he is? Or have we tried to do too many other things and just not got around to finding him or sitting with him? You see, God wants us to find him. God wants us to not hide from him. He wants to sit with us and us to dwell in his presence. And so this lockdown, uh, as we come to the end of it, my hope and my prayer for us as a church and for you as an individual is that you find God, that you open your eyes, 
you see where he is and what he is doing. And may you be encouraged as you see the delight and love in his eyes as you sit in his presence. Thank you, church. Lessons from lockdown. Hmm. I know. I've learned that my hair grows at an amazing speed. I've learned that my lipstick is going to dry up. I mean, who wears lipstick under a face mark? It's just a waste. Oh, yes. And I've learned that I love baking way too much. Yeah, okay. I do my baking without sugar and without flour, but still it's baking and it's so yummy. And I've learned that I can't read anything without my glasses anymore. That's a bit sad. Titus took a picture of me like this this morning. So I make really sure that I can see. On a more serious note, I have learned not to dwell on the things from lockdown that makes me sad. For instance, not being able to go and see our children, not being able to drive past my friend's house just yesterday and pop in for an impromptu visit, a cup of tea and a nice yarn. I have learned, rather, to listen to my inner voice. And what I mean with that is that we all have echoes from our past. We all have baggage that we drag with us. Yeah, all of us do. Put another way, Satan loves to remind us of our failings, of our unpleasant memories. Some of my echoes are you're fat and ugly. Nobody likes you. Now, I can't remember that anyone ever said those exact words to me when I was little, but my little girl mind came to that conclusion. So when I start thinking, I don't look good in anything I wear. My hips are too wide. I'm not good at anything. That's a danger sign for me. I have known the depths of depression. I have known the despair of being down in that deep, dark pit. And I know that I never want to go back to that place. So I do something about that inner voice. The biggest lesson I've learned from this latest lockdown is to breathe. I know it sounds strange. We all breathe without conscious thought, but do we breathe well? I don't have the time or the knowledge to go into the specific neuroscientific facts about breathing and what it does to your body. But I can tell you this, trauma counselors use breathing to calm their patients or their clients down. So I tried it and it works. When I recognize some anxiety in my thoughts or in my body, stiff shoulders, just not feeling too well, I stop and I breathe, preferably outside. It's too windy today. But a few deep breaths, counting to five when inhaling, holding it for five counts, and then releasing your breath for seven counts and then I can praise God. Deep, slow breaths, even when I'm not feeling downcast, somehow makes everything around me seem brighter and the colors seem more vibrant. It just makes my spirit rise. And then I can start to focus on God instead of on myself. For those of you who can relate to my story, you know that it's harder to praise God when you're spiraling downwards, when you're not feeling too good. So my challenge for you today is to breathe deep belly breaths. Inhale slowly for five counts. 
Hold it for five slow counts and then slowly exhale to the count of seven. Repeat this at least for three times and several times a day and notice the difference in your body, in your mind and in your soul. God bless you everyone. There have been many lessons that I have learnt and been learning in this lockdown time. Just last week I learnt something new when I asked one of my children if they'd brushed their hair that day. They looked at me astonished and they were like, Mum, I brushed it yesterday. Apparently that's what we do in lockdown. I've been learning a new social etiquette. Um, it goes like this. When we go out for family walks, there's usually someone from our family that will yell really loudly, people coming, and we'll all dutifully cross the road uh, to get away from people. In the beginning, I found myself apologizing to the people um, and just, you know, explaining that it wasn't about them. But now it's become the norm and uh, we need to keep ourselves distanced, don't we, to keep ourselves safe. I love that with God, we don't have to keep at a distance from him. He's not in lockdown and he wants to be in a relationship with us. He still wants to love us, to care for us, and he still wants to grow us up in him. I feel like God's been trying to get my attention. The spiritual dreams I've been having can only be from God speaking to me. I love that God continues, continually wants to try and speak to us. And it humbles me to think that our awesome God wants to be in relationship with us. He longs to be in relationship with you. He will never leave us nor forsake us. It's easy in lockdown to think of how things were and how we want to go back to normal life. However, having been through a life-changing events before, I'm reminded that the future will look different. What will our new normal look like? It's something to seek God about, something to get excited about. Isaiah 43 verses 18 to 19 from the Passion Translation says this, Stop dwelling on the past. Don't even remember these former things. I'm doing something brand new, something unheard of. Even now it sprouts and it grows and it matures. Don't you perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and open up flowing streams in the desert. Maybe, like me in this lockdown time, God has been speaking to you and wanting to heal you of past events. When we invite God into these past events, things do change. And he can and he will bring healing from the past and give us hope for our future. For me, I'm learning it's time to offload some of the past. Lighten my load. Let God heal me. 
so that I can pick up the things that he has for me in the future. God's been trying to get my attention. I like to coin it my out-of-the-box God experiences. You know, when God does something really cool that catches you by surprise, something you weren't expecting. God's doing a new thing in our midst. Are we able to perceive it? Are we even looking for it? I know it brings me fresh hope for the future, knowing God's in it and knowing he's wanting to do something new. Is God speaking to you today? Is he trying to get your attention? I pray that the eyes of our heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. Amen.
Yes, God, we are so grateful that we're able to worship you in this place, in our homes, online, together. We thank you for your presence that is with us. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for the work that you are doing in our lives, the way that you want to move deep within our hearts and bring restoration, transformation, hope to each and every one of us. May we be open to all that you want to do in our lives. Almighty God. Amen. Amen. Hey, thank you church family for joining with us today and those of you who might be watching for the first time in this service if you'd like to connect with us there's an email address down in the comments please contact us we'd love to get back to you and uh, those of you who may like to find out some next steps about what it means to follow Jesus we would love to have that conversation with you as well please uh, send us a note and we will get back to you on that same email address for those who may be struggling in need of prayer or care and support, we would really love to phone you and um, be in touch with you. So again, you can make a um, make an email to that, that email address as well and we will get back to you. Church family, as we head into the week ahead of us, still in level three and next Sunday level three as well, let's continue to be listening to the lessons from God during this lockdown time. Let's continue to be reaching out to our neighbours. Love your neighbour in the, those daily rhythms and the ways that we can. Let's be a blessing to our community around us. Just as we finish, I'd love to say this declaration about our God. He honore ki te atua, he karoria ki te atua, mangarongo ki te whenua. Whenua. May God be honoured and glorified. May God's peace be upon all of the land. Thank you for joining us today and I pray for God's blessing on you this week.